An effort to stop San Diego's minimum wage increase is picking up some speed. The city council passed an ordinance to raise the pay to $11.50 an hour by the year 2017, but opponents of the increase collected enough signatures for a referendum. So now the city council can either rescind the ordinance, schedule a special election, or put it on the ballot in the next regularly scheduled election, which would not be until June of 2016. So political analyst John Dadian is here with us this morning to break this all down, tell us what's going to happen next. John, thank you so much for coming in. Good morning. What will happen next now that it, it's official that enough valid signatures were collected? Right. Technically, the city council has 10 days since the city clerk has sent them saying that there are enough signatures. But from my understanding, it's going to be scheduled for this Monday's regularly scheduled city council meeting to decide which one of those options you descri uh, described. So the council will decide probably this coming Monday whether or not to let it go to the ballot or whether or not to rescind it. What do you think the council will do? Well, almost everybody's certain they're going to let it go on the ballot because they put their neck out so much and push this so much. Keep in mind, they, when I use the term push it so much, by saying this is necessary. So for them to rescind it, it would, it would look uh, pretty bad. However, there's kind of a bizarre editorial in today's Union Tribune that has some Machiavellian plan that they'll, they won't put it on the ballot, but then labor unions will put a new initiative on. That's the first I heard of that one. Okay, so it's interesting to see what will happen on Monday. If they do, in fact, put it on the ballot, it would not be on the ballot until June of 2016. That's a ways away from now. What do you think San Diego voters, given our track record of voting, will do with this? Well, again, you know, we're used to elections here, uh, you know, usually a short period of time between a primary and a general, three to four months. This will be a year and a half campaign. If you think you've seen a lot of things in your mailbox now or have heard a lot, <laughs> you're going to hear this for a year and a half. So it's going to be very long and drawn out. Now, keep in mind, several other tracks are going on. The state's raising their minimum wage in about a year uh, also. So all of these mechanics are, you know, overlapping. This is really interesting. Okay, can I switch gears on you just for a quick second? Absolutely. I didn't even tell the producer I was going to ask you about this. But Please. Uh, the Carl DeMaio race that's going on right now, uh, give us the very latest. This has gotten from strange to downright nasty. The mailers continue to come in the mailboxes every day. What do you make of this? Uh, well, you know, i got to be honest with you. No big surprises uh, to me in the sense that I've been saying, you know, for months, it's going to be a close race. Several of the polls that have been done over many months have not really changed that much. It's neck and neck within the margin of error, so it's absolutely virtual tie. That, ha that, that has not changed in the last four months. It's going to be a tie up to Election Day. Now, keep in mind, we used to use the acronym Get Out the Vote on Election Day, GOTV. That used to be a campaign mantra. Voting's happening right now. By Election Day, 70% of the vote probably will be in. So that's why you're seeing so many commercials right now. They're very concerned that people are listening maybe to the recent scandal, to you know the, all the different negative uh, commercials. They need to get the people voting now. Are you amazed by the money that's been spent on both sides for no, this? Nothing surprises me anymore. I'm not. Uh, put, let's put in perspective, Heather. 435 congressional races in the United States. This is one of the top five in the entire country. So absolutely, both sides have a lot. Uh, that the majority of the House is not going to be determined by this particular race, but each party wants to win this. It's what we call a swing district, and there's a lot on the line, not only money, but prestige by each party. And this is very, very interesting, fascinating to say the least. All right, do come back because Election Day is getting closer and closer. We need your expertise back in here, and then we'll see what happens on Monday when the City Council takes another look at uh, raising the minimum wage. Very good. All right, thanks, John.